All right. Great. Happy to be here uh, among the other people who are dumb enough to be in Austin and not at South by Southwest this week. Um, uh, I have got a presentation about beeswax. We've got these cute little uh, sort of half business cards, half uh, cleaners for your phone, which I think is kind of cool. I'm going to keep one myself. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk about transparency, flexibility, and control as it relates to programmatic. Um, it's a bit of a sales pitch, but I'm going to try to keep it informative and interesting and conversational. So there are takeaways uh, from my experience in programmatic. I've been doing this for uh, ad tech for like 15 years at Dumb Click and Google and many other places. So uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. Um, so the first thing I always get asked it, about beeswax, a lot of you probably haven't worked with us in the past, is what's up with the name? Uh, and the, the name beeswax, it's not a very ad techy name. It's not like blue potato or orange gorilla or when they're ad, ad this, ad that. Um, so we decided to have a name that was a little more fun. Uh, we, we designed the product for uh, marketers and advertisers who are a little more hands-on, hardworking. They think of themselves as kind of like busy bees. So we thought that was a cool name, right? Uh, but the name has some drawbacks. Um, so the obvious drawback is uh, the association with lip balm, uh, and you know we definitely get that a lot. Like people are like, "What? You know, what's up? You guys, you know, part of first bees or something?" Um, and you know we get emails like this one. Uh, this is Lee Pei from Zheng Hao Single Bay Industries, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we want some beeswax. We want two thousand tons of it. Um, and so we're still a pretty small company. So I'm the CEO, and I get these emails. So that I have an archive, running archive of the weird email that I'm getting. Uh, and then I, so before this uh, presentation, I asked our, our marketing manager, Julia, to pull our Google Analytics to see what people were searching for. And lo and behold, we have some interesting stuff here. Um, RTB hair butter. Now, I don't know if you guys know this. RTB hair butter is a real thing. It has nothing to do with what we do. And we're, we're really high in the search terms for it. It's a, it's a sort of a cream thing for uh, curly hair. Um, so we have all kinds of uh, real big advantages if the programmatic thing doesn't work out. They're going to pivot uh, and go organic products. All right, so back to programmatic. Um, so the hypothesis for beeswax, and I'll talk about this a bunch, is that DSPs are great. There's nothing wrong with DSPs. Probably everyone in this room has a relationship with one or more DSPs. Um, but they have drawbacks. They, have, they are effectively one size fits all. Um, and when we started Beeswax, we said, what if we could break free of that? We could say every customer in our cloud would effectively have their own DSP. Um, and our product is called the Bitter as a Service. And the from a technical perspective, that's what it is. We give each customer a full stack DSP that can be customized in all different ways. And the result is different. You can have competitive advantage based on how you use a very differentiated bidding stack. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and uh, I'll talk about some of the drawbacks of the current DSP world um, and how we uh, attempt and uh, succeed at, at uh, breaking free of those. So um, a typical DSP um, has um, somewhat opaque and limited reach. So everyone talks about millions of QPS out there, but what is the customer actually being able to reach is a, is a question that is hard to answer. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as it relates to uh, supply path optimization. Um, optimization is kind of the easiest thing to see if you're using uh, a standard DSP. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you're in a multi-brand environment, sometimes it'll work for one brand, not for another. And it's often hard to tell why it's working and what should be working. Um, and lastly, on the data side, the amount of data that is uh, available to a marketer or an agency through a DSP is extremely limited when you compare it to the amount of data that exists. Um, and when we go side by side, we'll uh, kind of talk about this a bit, um, when you have your own DSP, the beeswax experience, bidder as a service, you choose the supply, you can have custom optimization, you can do very detailed integrations, very custom integrations, and all the data is available and it's totally transparent. So that, that's, you know, sums what I'm going to be talking about. Once again, I'm going to try not to be so much of a sales pitch. I'll, I'll try to be uh, more topical. Okay, SPO. Everyone's heard of SPO? Supply path optimization. It's a new hot thing. Uh, we can't go a year without having a new acronym. Um, I wrote an article on this, you can Google, Google it, uh, bringing up some interesting points about whether SPO is always good, right? But is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. We'll see. Um, so with SPO effectively is saying there's millions of QPS, uh, queries per second, QPS, there's millions of queries per second out there available from all the exchanges. 
Um, and that's a lot of it's duplicative, a lot of it's fraud, a lot of it's just crap, um, a lot of it's good stuff, right? And so it makes sense intuitively that you should optimize the supply. You should say, well, you know, we should do something on the supply side, not just you know randomly bid on millions of QPS. Um, what's important to realize is that fundamentally that is a DSP optimization. The, the reason you're optimizing those millions of QPS is for the DSP to save money while delivering the results to the marketer or agency. I'm using those terms down interchangeably. It is not a marketer optimization. Marketers aren't getting better results necessarily because of the supply is being optimized before they bid. They may, if it's being done right, or they may not, and they may lose reach because the DSP effectively is trying to save money. Um, so what what makes a little more sense to me is that instead of having supply sort of throttle before a given piece of demand, a given marketer campaign can bid, um, in our world, what we do is we ask our customers what supply is relevant to them. So for example, all supply that matches my user IDs. I want to see 100%, even if it's duplicated, of auction requests that have my user IDs present. Uh, and then I could decide on a bidding level, or uh, looking at the raw data, what makes sense, what strategy should be applied, uh, what I should be doing and not doing. Uh, I can guarantee you that on a wedding of standard major DSPs, you are not saving 100%. If I see it, you would have no idea if you're actually seeing it or not. <laughs> you are not bidding on 100% of your matched IDs. There's some algorithms that happen before you see anything that is not transparent, that is deciding to throw out some auctions that could have been won or could have been interesting for your bidding algorithm. So once again, in our world view, tell us what you want, and that's what you get. If you want 100% of mass traffic in M that's MRAID compatible, in-app, 300 by 250, we will give you 100% of that um, without any optimization ahead of that. Um, so uh, the end result is you get a, a a bidding technology that's listening to 100% of the supply that you could be bidding on. Uh, so the takeaway is really, whether you use us or not, you should really understand what optimizations are happening before you have a chance to bid. A lot of conversations people have is about what's my strategy for bidding? You know, am I doing, uh, am I doing uh, some sort of test control? Am I doing this and that? But be, your DSP is doing optimizations well before you ever got there, and you, you probably don't understand them. All right, so the second question is about algorithms. And, and I like to say, I hope neither of them are in the room, but um, if, you're, if you're using a typical DSP and you're Coke, uh, you're using the exact same algorithm that Pepsi's using, basically. Uh, and that doesn't sound like a great way to get competitive advantage. Uh, the algorithms that are out there are pretty standard. Um, there, it's the same code base, the same techniques with certain tweaks depending on who the customer is or what the strategy is. And I, I think that the world um, is moving beyond that. Customers and are getting more advanced and the techniques that are, are available allow much more granularity and specificity in the algorithms being used. So, um, with a DSP, um, they generally have one algorithm, and then some DSPs allow you to kind of pull the lever, say, be more aggressive, be less aggressive, uh, or here's my KPI, or here's two KPIs, et cetera. Um, but what if you could bring your own algorithm, sometimes called BYOA? It sounds complicated, but it's not necessarily. Um, so to put a fine point on it, different customers have different KPIs using the same algorithm. Um, in the beeswax world, we have multiple options, um, and we think we have the broadest array of options. We're not the only DSP where you could do some algorithm customization. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that we have um, we have some really interesting options for these for advanced use cases. So, first of all, we have partnerships with companies like Media Gamma, which is a European deep learning company. We also have one with Cognitive here in the U.S. And these companies will build fully bespoke algorithms for our customers. Um, they will understand the business. They'll tune it. Uh, they will get results based on specific customer KPIs, so not one size fits all. The same techniques around deep, deep learning, but nothing shared between customers. Um, we have a product, sort of crawl, walk, run. We have a product that we released this week that I'll go through in a moment that allows customers to use bid modification technologies. And this is something some of you may be familiar with. Uh, effectively, in the UI, allowing a uh, ad ops uh, or trafficker to move the bid around based on all kinds of variables. 
And uniquely in the industry, we have the capability, because of the architecture I mentioned earlier, where we only, each customer has their own bidder, we uniquely in the industry have the ability to really have bring your own algorithm. So we have uh, dozens of customers live right now with their own algos in their own data centers running in our system. Um, there, people put out press releases like DSPX has bring your own algorithm. They don't. You have to call up their service team. They build it for you. They tweak things. We're the only company in the industry where you can literally write your own algorithm in whatever language you want and deploy it in our cloud. So I want to talk about bid modification a bit. Some people in the room may be very familiar, some less. Um, it's a really powerful technique um, that's available in one or two other DSPs. Um, we think that because we have this crawl, walk, run capability, it's really powerful in our system. Uh, it gets customers started fast. So um, bid modification is this idea that you have uh, a line item with a budget and a bid. And that's great, but as soon as you start getting results, it becomes insufficient because um, the world is not an average. Uh, when you get results on your line item, you start de-averaging things, and you start seeing that certain variables are producing lift or performance. Um, you don't want to just blacklist things because they're underperforming. They may still be valuable, but performing at a lower level. So in this example, based on some results from the campaign that's been running a, a day or two, you decide that Austin, Texas isn't delivering them well. I guess people are all having beer and at South by. You know, reduce the bid in Austin. Uh, but there's 20 domains that have high, that are performing really well. Increase the bid on those domains. Um, so, the user level scores. So using this technology, we allow our customers to score every user in their CRM system and have it affect bidding directly. So one-to-one -one marketing with really no tech overhead. All you have to do is upload a list of the IDs with a score. Um, that, that breaks through so many barriers of how complex some of the implementations are and gives you the ability to move towards you know, de-average user bidding uh, with very little overhead. And you get the point. So basically, the trafficker or the ad ops person can set these scores in our UI using our REST API, upload a spreadsheet, um, and produce effectively custom algorithms in real time with no tech work. Um, then, based on those results, we can move to a fully custom algorithm that does more complex interactions um, over time. So it's kind of a crawl, walk, run capability to bring your own algorithm. All right, so the basic takeaway here is uh, don't accept one size fits all optimization. Once again, whether you use beeswax or another DSP, whatever DSP you're working with, um, if the answer is, if the answer is how do I get my KPIs is, hey, check the box and tell us what you want, that's probably not the right answer. Um, you shouldn't trust that black box. Um, so data, there's a lot of data out there, and um, sometimes we feel overwhelmed by the amount of data that's out there, right? So um, in a typical DSP, you get reporting. I, I hope every DSP has reporting, although I've heard some people uh, complain they can't get even the reporting from their agency. You should get reporting. <laughs> a lot of dimensions, rolled up, maybe hourly, great. Um, sometimes you'll get win logs, so lo raw logs of the impressions you won. Um, sometimes you have to pay for that. Um, some DSPs don't give that or, don't, or make it very difficult. Um, that, that's, that's great, that's useful. Uh, I would suggest everyone can use win logs. Um, but there's a lot more data out there. Uh, I mean, if you think about all the mechanizations that go on behind the scenes in your DSP, how many data scientists they have, how many, how many, how many technologists they have, they're not working on win logs. They have all kinds of data you're not getting. Um, so if you think about it, there's really three levels or four levels of data, one's not shown here. Um, we have wins, but we also have bids uh, and auctions. Um, so bids are pretty obvious. So if you're, bid, you, if you're bidding on certain impressions and you may be winning, you may be not, uh, understanding why and what patterns of wins and losses is really important trading data for getting better at what you're doing. Um, some, sometimes you see a win rate or an aggregated win rate, but that's the, different than being able to dive in and understand every single aspect of what's winning and what's not. Auction level data, uh, once again, from our model where we're deploying a custom bidding instance for each customer, we are filtering that traffic to just the traffic you're interested in well, auction data suddenly becomes me meaningful and valuable. No one wants to look at the three, four million QPS of data that's going through every single DSP in the world. It's just overwhelming. But 
if you have a deployed bidder that only is listening to say 10,000 queries per second, and there are 10,000 queries you're always interested in because we've filtered it to exactly what you're interested in, suddenly the auction logs are super interesting because you can start saying, what are my customers doing? Where should I be buying media? Where should I not be buying media? Um, and, and the auction logs give you incredible insights. So we provide all of this data to our customers. Once again, I'm pretty confident we're the only DSP that does this. Um, the, um, the win data is super valuable, but bids and auctions, if you have the capability to analyze them, are um, invaluable. One of the things we do to make it easier is we have a partnership with MetaMarkets. People familiar with MetaMarkets? Anyone use it? Hands up, uh, like one person, two people. Okay, that's probably why they got bought by Snapchat. Um, so <laughs> um, MetaMarkets is this amazing dashboard. It's kind of like Tableau for ad tech. Um, it, it's not available in DSPs because usually the data is too much, too overwhelming for MetaMarkets, uh, but we make it available because, uh, for our customers. So MetaMarkets allows you to drill down at the auction level and say, ask really any question about the data. You can answer questions which I guarantee you can't answer anywhere else. Things like, I just put up a couple here on the side. I want to know my win rate on auctions that are mobile app only with M-rate enabled in Chicago. Uh, I want to know my video complete rate on large video players desktop vPay 2.0 on certain exchanges. Those are questions which are really hard to answer, um, uh, almost impossible to answer with any aggregated report because there's just too many dimensions. There's literally 50 dimensions you could and an or on. But because we're piping our raw auction data into meta markets, we give that to our customers uh, with easy visibility. Um, so I won't go through that too much. Um, so the takeaway is if you only have wind data, you don't know what you don't know. Um, Wind data is the tip of the iceberg, to use a metaphor. At least I didn't use that, that, uh, that iceberg graphic everyone has in their presentation, so give me that credit. Um, so, so last question I'll, I'll address is, and I get this a lot, is like, well, who's using this? Like, this sounds complicated. Like, is this like, you know, do I need like PhDs to use this thing? Um, no. Uh, we have... Um, we're a quickly growing company. We have over 60 uh, deployments of this uh, solution. This is some of, some of the logos of companies who are using us. Um, I'll, I'll point out um, Overstock, because Overstock is giving a presentation later today. Craig, you want to raise your hand? Sorry. He's, not one, he's not our salesperson, he's our customer. And he's giving a presentation later today about some of the things he was able to achieve. Um, so what we're, uh, the best customers for us are people who are either in-housing or hands-on with their programmatic, who want to take control, get better results, and also want to invest for the long term. Uh, and get, get those results out of the system. Uh, we built this product really for those use cases. We felt they were underserved by the current DSPs, uh, and, and it's really an exciting time to be able to offer these really advanced services at reasonable prices and, uh, and enable our customers to be successful in ways they couldn't possibly be otherwise. All right, so that's it. So uh, should I take any questions or, or out? Uh, you know what, we, um, we have a, a minute or so if you have uh, any questions for Ari. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand. If you don't have any questions, Ari, I know you have a team here. Panos and Brendan, where are you guys? Okay, there's your there's Team Beeswax right over there. Um, and Ari, you're not going to be here for the duration. I'm not. Uh, All right, so this is your chance to grill him. You have any questions for this man? All right, yeah, here we go. go. Now, uh, real quick, um, as you ask questions throughout the three days, just let us know who you are and where you're from. Thank you. Uh, Dave Varenius, I'm from uh, IBM Watson Advertising or the Weather Company, and I'm on the publishing or the publisher side. And I'm curious as to see at the beginning when you mentioned uh, what data is limited to you, and then what what, you, what on the buy side what they really look for. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, on the buy side, what ideal use cases when you're looking at the data from bids or auctions and you're trying to understand the landscape. To give one example, like imagine you're you're buying a certain um, website or app and it's high priced because it's retargeting, and then you look at the data and see there's enormous session depth in that on that site, like if slideshows, right? You have, you have uh, the average user is uh, is uh, having ten impressions in a row on that site. Well, your bidding strategy is too high. You can lower your bid and still achieve your reach on that site. That's just one example. Um, we're very careful to protect publisher data rights as well. We're not, uh, our customers are strictly disallowed from creating user segments or otherwise using that raw data in ways that are prohibited by the exchanges or the publishers. Okay. Right, great, well thank you very much for having me and uh, Brendan and Panos over there will take care of you and I'm happy to talk offline uh, anytime.
Great. All right, thank you very much. Big hand for Ari.